bringing Christ to the nations, the Lutheran Hour. His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I is the 225th reigning monarch of Ethiopia, a descendant of the line which is said to have had its origins in the union of King Solomon of Israel and the Queen of Sheba, celebrated in Ethiopian folklore and preserved in the imperial coat of arms. The seal of the house of David, Solomon's father, is there, but not by itself. The cross of Christ, combined with David's emblem, points back to the time when Christianity came to Ethiopia in the 4th century A.D., and to the force which Ethiopia's Coptic Christian tradition has exerted to bind her people together and to shape her culture. Music like that of the krar, which you hear in the background, a four-stringed instrument plucked with the fingers, remains in use to this day. And the countryside is dotted with churches centuries old, many of them carved out of solid rock. It is to Ethiopia itself, and to this Christian tradition, that we want to introduce you today, as the Lutheran Layman's League presents a special program on the celebration of Christmas in Ethiopia featuring an interview with His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia. Addis Ababa, Ethiopia's capital city, means new flower in Amharic, Ethiopia's official language. The city is aptly named. Less than 80 years old, it grew up in Ethiopia's central highlands, to a present-day population of nearly 500,000. I talked with Emperor Haile Selassie in his private office in Jubilee Palace, built in 1955 in the southeast part of Addis Ababa, to commemorate the 25th anniversary of His Imperial Majesty's reign. Although Emperor Haile Selassie speaks excellent English, which is Ethiopia's second language, he answered my questions in Amharic since state protocol requires him to conduct all official business in the official language. Our first interpreter is Dr. Manasi Haile, Ethiopia's Minister of Information and Tourism. In the background, you can hear children playing in the courtyard of the palace. Your Imperial Majesty, it is a great honor to be permitted to speak with you today and also to have you as a guest on this special Christmas program which will be broadcast to people all over the world. Your Imperial Majesty, what is it that makes you want to follow Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is in the Catholic Medellin when Jesus Christ was born from Virgin Mary. From that time on, he lived an exemplary life. A life which men everywhere must emulate. This life and the feats that he has taught us assures us of salvation, assures us also of harmony and good life upon earth. Because of the exemplary character of the life of Jesus Christ, it is necessary that all men do their maximum in their human efforts to see to it that they approximate as much as they can the good example that has been set by him. It's quite true that there is no perfection in humanity. From time to time we make mistakes, we do commit sins, but even as we do that, deep in our hearts as Christians we know we have a chance of forgiveness from the Almighty. He taught us that all men are equal, regardless of sex, their national origin and tribe. And he also taught us, all who seek him shall find him. To live in this healthy life, a Christian life, is what makes me follow Jesus Christ. Imperial Majesty, what advice would you give a person who is considering the claims of Christ? perhaps for the first time. Christopher, 
I would tell a person that's considering the claim of Christ uh, for the first time that it is necessary to have faith in the Almighty, that it's necessary to have love, and that it's necessary to conduct oneself in a manner that we have been taught to do in the Bible. I would advise him to read and to study the Bible. I would also advise him to seek secular knowledge. For the one, the more one knows, the more he realizes the need for a prime mover, the need for a creator, a creator who is good, and the need for salvation and also for peaceful life upon earth. I will also tell him to learn and to think for himself the ways he would serve the Lord. In these thoughts and in this undertaking of his, he will inevitably find the way of serving his fellow men. For his faith would then be manifested by his conduct. If Christians behave in this way, if we dedicate ourselves to this fundamental task, then we will have a peaceful world and we will be assured of not transgressing against uh, the will and the commandments of God. Your Imperial Majesty, are there any incidents in your life which stand in your memory as times when faith in Christ sustained you? <laughs> There are many instances in my life where the belief in the Almighty and the Christian faith has sustained me times of trouble and difficulties. No matter what may befall a human being, he can always succeed in overcoming it in time if he has the, he has the strength of faith and praise to God. For inevitably, he comes to the assistance of those that believe in him and those that through their work uh, live an exemplary life. This goes not only for Christians in my view, but for all men. I think God commiserates with those uh, that find themselves in misfortune. In particular, when my country, Ethiopia, was invaded by alien forces several years ago, I was sustained in that period by my faith in God and in the abiding belief that justice, however it may take time, will ultimately prevail. If I did not have faith in the Almighty and in His righteousness and that justice inevitably prevails, then I would have lost hope, and as thus, the interest of my country would have been ignored. Because I attempted to maintain my faith in him, and because all Ethiopians maintained their faith in the ultimate goodness of the world, and in the design, grand design, that the Almighty has for all men in the world, we were able to victoriously re-enter our country and rid ourselves of his evil forces. If I did not have in my heart the love of God, I don't think I would have acted in a manner that I did. The love of God brings a sense of religiousness in a human being. It gives him comfort for the future and assurance that right causes will ultimately prevail.